Let's take a look at some levels of thinking kids could pass through in the early childhood years. Well, they should pass through them in the early childhood years, but we found that many kids can be in the intermediate school and not have gotten the experiences that help them uh, develop these levels. But if they're given good experiences, generally kids from about uh, pre-K to about second or third grade will develop through the following levels. Let's take a look at a puzzle, for instance. This is a very simple puzzle that we have. Um, and the reason we would give this, we would give this to some of the early, earliest kids, kids at the earliest levels, because do you notice each shape is well demarcated here? It's almost not a composition task. It's almost just a match, match to the outline task. Still in all, you'll find kids at the earliest level unable to be able to solve this task um, they will try, but they'll, their, their matching will be off. They'll try to fill spaces and put things in between. This is what we call a pre-composer level. The child has very little experience and needs to be able to do more puzzles just like this one and encouraged and helped to be able to match those. At the next level of thinking, the child will, the piece assembler we call the child, will be able to match those outlines, often by trial and error, so that they might get a piece and finally be able to make everything fit. But they might leave some blanks or have some things that don't exactly match, but basically they can do that. Then there's the ch child, and I'm going to switch puzzles on us here, because at the next level, to show that level, you really need some areas that are pretty, have several areas that are highly suggestive. For us as adults, for instance, this is pretty easy to see. But there's still some areas in the middle that are a little more amorphous, ambiguous, as to what shapes will fill that. At the next level, which we call the picture maker, children can indeed, like the name implies, make a picture, but there's still a lot of trial and error that goes into it where the kids can try. No, I think that should, but that goes outside the line. So they try and they get another piece and they try that and fit that in. Okay, that's working for them now. And then they, through a process of trial and error, they can work this out and finally solve it. And actually, if you only saw the finished product, you would say, there's nowhere else for that child to go. This child has it. But if you watch the process that the child used, a lot of trial and error, a lot of guesswork, you would know that there's somewhere else for those kids to go. And those kids would generally be at that level very frustrated uh, by puzzles such as this because they just can't fill the broad areas like this well with a trial and error. It just takes them too long where the child at the very next level, our goal for kids in uh, uh, pre-K K to 1 at, at the very least would be to develop their abilities to be at this next level, um, which we call the shape composer level. And that is the child that actually can see ahead of time. Once the child reaches over and grabs a block, they don't move it to the paper and try to fit it in. When they get there, they know it will fit. In other words, they might even turn it in the air on the way over to the puzzle because they know uh, a shape will fit. Not like the other child who might try to turn and, and, and fiddle around and do it. These children will have a plan where they will say they know this fits and then they'll grab the next one and they'll, they just know. And the next one's immediately again followed up with ones where they just know. And I won't finish this whole puzzle, but the children can see. We think kids at that level have the ability to create and maintain and manipulate shapes mentally. That's the goal. When, again, kids can both deal with the physical situation and are doing it by, by uh, mentally manipulating those same objects, just like kids who can put numbers together in their head, had kids who can rotate, flip, and think of how shapes fit together in their heads have a powerful tool then to analyze, like I said, not only simple shape puzzles, but 
dividing up an area that's a more complex room shape so they can figure out the area, the, uh, the area of, that, of that space for a rug or something, to look at a, a piece of artwork and say, I see what happened. They took this basic triangular arrangement and then broke it down into these two right triangles, and that's how this artist composed this, the, this shape. And the like. Or look at a building and say, really what that is is a tiling of various hexagons. These are the kids that have these powerful tools that for, the, for these kids, all the world around becomes a playground to use mathematical ideas to be able to enrich their picture of what that world consists of. Those are the kids that are going to go on to mathematics and science if they want to. And that's the kind of power that when you develop along these learning trajectories, those are the kind of tools you're given to children.